Hello, my name is Collection Connoisseur. I collect digital thingamabobs and video games, and today I'm playing Monster Train. Last time on Monster Train, we did some daily challenges, so this time I'm going back to standard runs. My general plan now is to Divinity Master all of the champions. One of the champions we have not done so is Wildenton, the exiled champion of the Awoken clan. So let's work on that next. And then, also, I would like to increase my levels of clans. It looks like the Umbra is still the lowest level. So let's try to figure out which, which one we would like to start with of these two. Do we want to start with Shade Splitter or Plink? So Shade Splitter... Shade Splitter just gives you a morsel. Plink gives you a morsel if you slay. And it hits a random enemy twice. I think I'm going to go with Plink. So we're going to go exiled, exiled with the... Whoops, with the Awoken. With the Awoken and the Umbra. And we are on Covenant rank 11. I've never played with this one. The Merchant rerolls cost 20% more. Don't like that. I also have to remember the other Covenant rank additions, such as playing minions on the top floor is pretty bad. It adds Ember Drain. We've got Seraph the Chase this time with the Purifying Emblem. Removes half of any buff and debuff effect stacks. To me, that means that Thorns are not going to be as good as they would be otherwise. Because I think you do Thorns a lot with the Awoken, potentially. We have Razor Sharp Edge, The Perils of Production, and Preserved Thorns. All three of these I've Divinity Mastered, and you can see that I'm using the new Mastery card outline. Perils of Production is pretty nice as long as you have a Morsel unit to play it on, and Preserved Thorns is fine, I think. So I kind of like this starting, this set of starting deck cards. Let's look at the starting deck though. So we've got the Perils of Production, we've got Plink, which is our current way to gain morsels. It's not a very good way to gain morsels yet. Razor Sharp Edge is pretty nice. It allows us to, to increase the attack value of, of creatures. And it works pretty well with certain types of Awoken cards, I think. Root Seeds is the starting card for the Exiled Champion. It's okay. I like to draw one next turn. I think these work decently well with Perils of Production, because we can gain lots of Ember and draw lots of cards. The Sting spells also give us draw next turn, so we have a lot of draw effects in our deck currently. And of course the Train Stewards. Let's ignore those. Let's upgrade our champion first. So I really like the sweep upgrade. The Thorn Lord upgrade. Add more sting spells to your hand. So this would add even more stings than we already have. We're going to have a lot of stings. The encant is really nice though. I do really like the sweep. Sweep just kind of takes care of a lot of enemies if we have that on our champion. So I like both of these. I like them for mainly different reasons. I think I'm going to go the encant route this time, because that encant could be very nice with all of the spells I believe we're going to be able to play every turn. So, Thorn Lord it is. And then let's gain this artifact first. Our Pyre could be stronger. Ooh, our Champion gains plus 50% max health. That's pretty good with what we have in our Champion. I think I'm going to take that. The Winged Indulgence I think is quite nice. It looks so simple, but I think it's nice. But I am going to take Mark of an Exile. That makes our Champion pretty beefy. When you play your first Morsel unit each turn, draw one. I really like that. 
That adds a draw ability during the turn instead of during the previous turn. Improved Firebox is not bad either, but 7 Ember on the first turn is just not the turn where we're going to have cards to draw. So let's play Mask of Penumbra and go into our first battle. The first defense. So non-boss enemies enter with spikes three. That's not too bad with what we currently have. Let's turn it on. I also really like turning on these first trials. Now the main problem here is that even though we've got Wildenton, which can do some things, unfortunately, he doesn't do much at the beginning, and our Plink spell is pretty bad right now. We basically don't get to use Mask of Penumbra until the Plink spells are better. So what do we do here? We might want to set up on floor two. If we set up on floor two, I would play Wildenton, a train steward, maybe both train stewards. We can't play both train stewards on floor two. I could play a train steward at the bottom to just kill it off. That's probably better than playing Plink, honestly. So let's play on floor two. Ooh, I completely forgot about those. So those make it a lot nicer to do things at the bottom. Kind of wish I had gone at the bottom now. Well, Wildenton, very sorry, but I forgot what you actually did. <laughs> giving me those three stings. So we are going to sting down here. I guess that means we can sting that one to death and then play a train steward here and a train steward here. Just let that train steward die. We should, we should be able to do something with a plink this turn. Great. Looks like we get to play a plink. So a plink could kill either one of those. Random enemy twice. Bam. So we did get one. Only one, but still, that's not too bad. I just realized that we don't have a place to play morsels up here, which is kind of a mistake. Well, we've got a place to play morsels down here. So let's play them down here. And I guess we'll play preserved thorns. All right. We have a lot of energy that we could use this turn because we can play a Train Steward and we can play the Perils of Production on the Ant Umber Morsel. Can we keep, keep the Train Steward alive? Only if we can kill this one, which a Plink is very likely to kill it, but not guaranteed. Let's start with a Plink. All right, it killed it. That means that we can play the Train Steward here. The Train Steward will survive. We can play another Morsel Jeweler here. And we can play the rest of our cards. Perils of Production. And Perils of Production. Means that we can play Preserved Thorns. That means we get more stings. So we draw more next turn. Do we want the Razor Sharp Edge on our Train Steward? Maybe, maybe not. I set up on floor two. And now that I've done that, I don't think I needed to. Ooh, the Plink did not hit the Collector. I guess I should have done a Sting here, so that the Plink would definitely have hit the Collector. Oh well, let's do that now. Do... let's... let's keep with Wildenton, because Wildenton is definitely going to be victorious, whereas the Train Stewards at the bottom might not be victorious. Also, sent that guy at exactly one so we could hit him with a plink. That was not necessarily planned, but it was great. So, train stewards at the bottom. Let's... Let's put train stewards at the bottom. And the stings will go here so that we do the encant. Both stings. The razor sharp edge can go here. And then we ran out of energy. All right. Let's see if we can win at the bottom, even though we set up at the second floor. Not very likely. Yeah, we, we drew a bunch of stings, but we didn't draw anything that could hit that one back there. 
So the razor sharp edge could do a lot. Yeah, this does a fair amount. And then root seeds as well. So there we go. We're dealing 48 damage to the boss. And we're basically guaranteed to win next turn. We did get a weight of contrition, which is annoying. But there it goes, and we win. So overall, that was a perfect battle, but I could have won at the bottom floor and got more got more points. Points are not the most important thing to me, so I'm not upset that I made the wrong decision there. Just I need to remember what my champion actually does. So the Steel Enhancer, I like. It goes pretty well in a deck that draws lots of cards every turn. Sharpen works as well, too. The Spikes 4 is particularly interesting for every battle except for the Serif battle. I think I want the Sharpen. And then our Umber card. Mind Collapse. Mind Collapse is okay. Mind Collapse is a lot better if we can... We can add a Power Stone to it. We want to add Power Stones to several cards right now. But it is a lot better if you can add a Power Stone to it. The Prismal Dust is also very nice. And Immortal Trade, I still don't know when I'm going to take that card. I'll take it sometime, but I don't know when. I think the Prismal Dust works pretty well with what we have so far because we can gain energy. And adding, adding a big damage shield to our champion might be good. Let's get that. The Awoken Banner is probably what I want compared to the Umbral Banner. I think I want more Awoken units. Yes. And the Merchant of Steel... I don't like going to the Merchant of Steel first, though. That's the main problem. Because the Merchant of Steel first, you only know that you have your champion. We are getting a banner unit, so we know we'll have a second unit, but that's only two units. Whereas the Merchant of Magic is good with the starting cards. So I'm actually going to go to the right, because I think the Merchant of Magic is a better way to start. Let's see what our Umber unit is, though. Well, there's Morsel Maker, which gets bigger every turn. It's not bad. The Alloyed Construct, I really do like it. We just need a more consistent source of morsels than we currently have to make it work. Oh, look. The Morsel Maker, when you sacrifice it, just basically does what the Ant Umbra Morsel and Magma Morsel does. So every turn, your guy just gets stronger. You know what? I'm going to take it because of that. It's a decent unit to sacrifice. And then Divine Horde. What do we have? I really liked the Chain of Gems. We played with that during the daily challenges. Priori's Cloak. Don't think we've played with this one. When a friendly unit is healed, deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to the amount healed. We don't have any healing cards yet. And then... Spell cards with Consume have 50% chance to be discarded instead. The only Consume cards we have are Prismal Dust and Preserved Thorns. Prismal Dust would be good to discard. Preserved Thorns, I kind of don't want it to be discarded. Let's take the Chain of Gems. So, our units will be very... will be very protected. And then Merchant of Magic. We do have a Power Stone. That's excellent. Freeze Stone. Do we care about Freeze Stone? Works well on Prismal Dust. Yeah, it works well on Prismal Dust. Let's put the Freeze Stone in Prismal Dust. Then we can save it for a turn when we have our Ember... our Extreme Ember amounts. Power Stone. We basically want Power Stone... Oh, we didn't take the card that I otherwise wanted Power Stone on. So, Plink. Plink gets a Power Stone, which means one of those Plinks is actually good. 
The other ones are not so great. Oh, the reroll costs 60. That reroll costing 60 really bothers me. Don't like it. Which thing do we want to make cost less? Probably the sharpen. Probably the sharpen. But honestly, the plink that I just put the power stone in is pretty good to make free. Because then we can feel free to remove the other ones. So I'm not going to re-roll. Yeah, I'm not going to re-roll. We're going to purge a card instead. And we're purging a train steward. Train stewards are so bad. Get them out of the deck. Next battle. Penitent Prayers. Now we have been taking a fair amount of pack shards so far. So the threat level is high. We can add units on every floor at the beginning for 75 gold. I do tend to like that. It actually helps our planks, probably. And we do have a fair amount of... Like, when we play Wildenton, we get three stings. And when we play Preserve Thorns, we get three stings. So, I think I want this. The damage that it will deal to the Pyre will hopefully be small. So, we play Wildenton at the bottom. And maybe we play the Morsel Maker at the bottom. What else would we put at the bottom? Basically nothing. So, how about our Wildenton and Morsel Maker at the bottom? That gives us three stings, which means we should be able to kill off things that would threaten our pyre. In fact, we should probably start with Plink next. So Plink, kill two of these. And then we get some morsels. Of those morsels, which do we want? We are going to play a morsel maker. We are going to play one of the morsels, and we're going to play Perils of Production on whichever one we play at the bottom. Remember if we play one at the top... Yeah, so we're not playing anything at the top except for the stings. Which one would I rather play? Morsel Jeweler or Rebel Morsel? On my Wildenton. Both of them are pretty nice. And the other one will just stay in the... in the... pile, I guess. I guess we probably want Rubble Morsel right now. So we play a Rubble Morsel. That draws us a card. It's a Train Steward. Then we play Perils of Production on that Rubble Morsel. It will die, so we will never, never experience that Ember Drain. And then Morsel Maker goes here. Now, we've got plenty of Ember. We want to take no damage on our Pyre if we can help it. So let's we'll sting at the top. And then... If we played the Train Steward here, it would die. Which is usually what I like to happen to Train Stewards. We could play the Morsel Jeweler there. That would basically mean... Hmm. Let's play it. And then the Root Seeds is going on our Champion. So... You guys are making it, you're going to add a card to my deck. You guys are making it, but we'll, we'll probably draw a Plink next turn, since we're drawing nine cards. And we have many Plinks in the deck. We did get a Sinner's Burden, which is not great. So, we... did not actually... oh, we did draw a Plink. We drew the better Plink. Huh. The better Plink is not what I wanted to draw. I wanted to draw one of the lesser Plinks. Which we still can, because we could play this Plink, get a Morsel, and then play the Morsel, draw a card, and potentially get another Plink. 
Okay, well we're going to play this plank here, because it has a chance to kill things. Here. It killed only one. Hmm. I guess we'll play a Rubble Morsel. We can't play any Morsels at the bottom. So we'll play a Rubble Morsel here, I guess. There. He actually survives. He also has Damage Shield too, because he's the first one I played. And then we did draw a Plink. So we can Plink up here, get two more Morsels. Now then... We want to play Preserved Thorns, but after we play other cards. Let's play Perils of Production. Let's get rid of the Sinner's Burden. And then we can fit cards in our hand, so let's play Preserved Thorns. Now... Do we want to kill you guys more than we want to deal with these? Maybe. I think we do. Kill this one, kill this one. Then the rest goes down here. Razor Sharp Edge can go on our champion, no problem. But it could also go on the Morsel Maker, which is not bad. Having some damage on a back unit is pretty nice, because if your front unit destroys the, the front one, the back unit can actually spend some damage. And noticing that. So let's do that. Put that there. And then Razor Sharp Edge here. And then Root Seeds there. So we're kind of spreading it around. And then we, we can still play Morsels. Oh no, you're no longer dying. So we're gonna we're going to get the Ember Drain. Whoops. Did not think of that. I guess we won't play another morsel, but we will play. Prismal Dust? No. We'll play Prismal Dust later when we have more energy. The Ember Drain 2 after this turn is really going to hurt. I did not intend to do that to us. So the Ember Drain 2 is bad. At least we won't get the next Ember Drain. And what do we do? This Plink is pretty bad. The Stings can take out this one, which is something, I guess. And then we could play a Train Steward here. Sure, why not? Let's play a Train Steward here. It does some damage, and it gains these Morsels. Those Morsel benefits, I should say. And the fact that we didn't kill those two shouldn't be a problem because they won't get to deal damage to the Pyre because we're going to kill this one right now. So, just click End Turn. They did nothing, and then we win. Slowly. Great, three turn boss rush, we got our trial bonus. And we took no damage on the Pyre even. Do I want another Sharpen? Could take another Sharpen. Glimmer is quite interesting. And Restoration Detonation is fine. Let's take Glimmer. I like Glimmer. Packed Morsels could solve the problem of the Planks not being very reliable. Making of a Morsel could do that same thing, though. I don't know if we want multiple Morsel units or not. This one costs zero from the beginning, though. And the fact that it has Consume on it is something that I like. So let's take it. Alright, we could duplicate a card and get Pyre Health. Or we could get Merchant of Steel and an Umbra unit. Umbra units are not the units I necessarily want, but they are getting a little bit better. Is there anything I would like to duplicate? I could duplicate the Prismal Dust, of course. I don't think there's anything I want to duplicate. So over here is basically just Pyre Health. Let's not worry about that, let's go right. 
And always do the concealed caverns first. That's my plan. Because the concealed caverns are the most unknown. Ooh, a chaos portal. I have never seen this one. Purge a card, gain a card. Well, I'm definitely going to do that. But the big question is, does it matter the rarity of what I'm purging? Like, what I want to purge is, of course, a train steward. And if I choose train steward, does that affect what I get in return? As if satisfied by your offering, the Chaos Portal reverses its pull, spewing out debris from all over hell. Through the mess, you can clearly see the realms of both the Awoken and the Umbra. A brief opening allows you to reach for one. Ooh, it's a random rare card. That's actually nice, and I do want a random rare Awoken card. Hey, we've played with that one recently. I like that one. Let's play with it this time, too. You reach through the portal to the Wildwood Forest, close your hand around something solid, and pull it back through. You turn to leave, and the Chaos Portal closes as quickly as it appeared. So that was a new event. I'd never seen that one before. And we got a card that I really like playing with, as you saw last time. So, Umber Unit... Umber unit before the Merchant of Steel. Let's look at what is in the Divine Temple. True Stone is really nice. That would be the only thing I'm considering, because I don't want my pack shards to grow too quickly. There is a Divine Horde near the end. Yeah, I don't really want my, my pack shards to grow too quickly. But that True Stone is really nice. Let's get the Umber Banner. The Crucible Collector. Never played with it. The Crucible Collector is kind of okay. The Alloyed Construct, I think, could be very good. It's just that it needs lots of fuel. In some senses, I don't want either of these. Otherwise... If I was going to sacrifice my Morsel Maker to one of those, it would be better sacrificed to the Alloyed Construct. It's just that eventually we would run out of fuel on our Alloyed Construct. It's not going to have fuel all the time. Because we just don't have tons and tons of Morsels. For the same reason, this one is not going to have life steal all the time. It having life steal makes it so that as long as as long as it doesn't die, it basically heals up all the time. I think I'm going to choose the right one, but my only reason, sadly, for choosing it is that I've never played with it before. So let's play with it and see if it's better than I think it is. The large stone, the large stone could be very good on that unit we just got. I do like the large stone on that unit, on the Crucible Collector. So let's do that. And then the heart stone or the strength stone are also good on that unit. If we're going to get both of them, what would we put them on? We want to sacrifice the Morsel Maker later, so we shouldn't spend money upgrading it. I guess we would prefer to have a Strength Stone on that Crucible Collector. So let's do that. And then, otherwise, let's purge a card. Let's purge... I kind of want to purge one of the planks, or one of the root seeds. But gotta purge train stewards. Train stewards are quite bad. Let's get rid of those first. And do I want the true stone? I do. A true stone on a plank 
makes the plank a lot better and makes it so that we get morsels more reliably. Glimmer is also good for that, but I think the plank earns more from it overall. So Daedalus the Professor, we're still at threat level medium. Actually, we're at threat level level high, I guess. And the constructed explosives explode twice. That can be bad, but it might not be too bad since we have the chain of gems. Well, we actually have a couple of planks down here, so we can play a lot of things. Unfortunately, we don't have... We don't have enough ember to play all of my things. If I play this plank, then I don't get to play the Crucible Collector. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to not play this plank, but we'll play this other one. And we will play the Wildington down here. We will play the Plink down here. And we got two Morsels. That would be good for Crucible Collector to have with him. The Crucible Collector is going to go here on the second floor. And down here we can destroy these units with Stings. So sting them both. And then Morsel Maker here. And then we'll put a Morsel on both floors. I guess let's put the Rubble Morsel down here and the Ant Umber Morsel there. And then we could plan, spend a Sting destroying this, but there's no point to doing that. And I'd rather get the Encant on my champion. You know, you work really well with the Morsel Maker. I did not really think about the fact that I had the Morsel Maker when I chose not to take the Alloyed Construct. I had it in my mind that we were going to sacrifice this, so I didn't think about the fact that having it in the deck might be just as good. Now, what do we want? We did not get... We did not get a Plink, but we did get Glimmer. Glimmer could kill the things at the bottom. And then Preserved Thorns could kill this, no problem. So let's do Preserved Thorns first. And kill this one. Now you get 45 damage. Awoken Rail Spike is pretty nice. I don't really care about the Root Seeds or the Train Steward. I kind of like the Glimmer. So let's play the Glimmer. And then we're going to play Perils of Production on one of our morsels that will get eaten. Can we draw five cards? We cannot. So let's play a Sting. And then we'll draw five cards with the Awoken Rail Spike. Wonderful. Now, a lot of those are free. I guess we want to play a lot on this guy. We can plink. I guess we'll we'll plink up here. Just deal a little bit of damage to the boss. I could have plinked down here. Nah, he can make it one more floor. No problem. So do this again. Play the packed morsels up right here. Oh, right. The encant made it so that he dies. So where do I want the morsels? I can't actually play them all. Let's play a magma and an Ant Umbra. And the last morsel we can't really play without taking Ember Drain at the top, which I don't want. Let's play a Perils of Production on this morsel. And now we could play Prismal Dust on one of our cards. Do I want that more than Root Seeds? The Root Seeds doesn't do much. So let's just use the Prismal Dust while we have the energy. There we go. Great. This battle is basically solved. We can basically kill everything that comes out, and we have enough that I think we can kill the boss too. 
Perils of Production. We've got two Perils of Production. We've got a Plink. Sharpen, Razor Sharp Edge. Okay, so let's start by playing Razor Sharp Edge a couple of times on the back unit. And then Perils of Production to get more Ember. Gain even more Ember. And Plink might kill this. It has a very low chance, but no reason not to try. It did not kill it. Let's sharpen our champion. And then Root Seeds. Root Seeds the champion once really helps. And then this one is killing itself, so no problems there. Let's Root Seeds this one now. And then the Train Steward. I guess we could play a Train Steward here. We don't want to, though, because we want space for Morsels right there. So don't play the Train Steward. The main reason to play the Train Steward was that we don't draw it again. The downside to that was if I played it at the top, we would have gotten Ember Drain 1 this turn. Which turns out to not be a problem, but didn't know that it was not going to be a problem. Ooh, the Conduit Infiltrator. Kind of scary, except that we have Glimmer, which kills everything here, no problem. I guess what we should do first is play Plink, so that we get two Morsels. And then we play Glimmer. And the bottom is done, so let's, let's deal some damage to the boss. Play a Rebel Morsel, and play an, another Sting, another Sting on the boss, and an Ant Umber Morsel here too. There we go. We've got a lot of zero cost cards. Alright, so, what are we going to do with all of them? The bottom is dying already, we don't actually have to do anything. This one is dying because he has Sweep, though, which we don't like. However, if we just do a Sting here, we could do a Sting on the boss. We are going to play the Ant Umber Morsel here, so might as well do that. Razor Sharp Edge. I guess we would do that on the boss. And then... If we play the Plinks, we might hit this one. I don't know if I want to hit that one, actually. Well, it does add one morsel that we would be able to play, so let's play it. And then Root Seeds in multiple places, and another Sting. We don't need to play Perils of Production, so we won't. And as far as Root Seeds go, let's just play it down here. And then one here. Heal that boss a little bit of damage. Daedalus, we are going to take out pretty easily. Yep, already died. Click the end turn button and win. All right, things have been going swimmingly so far. Deal 30x damage to the front enemy unit. That might be pretty nice. Channel Song is fine, except that we don't have that many units in our deck. Spreading Spores seems bad. It's particularly bad with... with the fact that we are playing against the Seraph that removes half of all buffs. So, the buffs go away. And I don't know that we actually want tons of copies of that card in our discard pile. So I'm considering Forever Consumed as another X cost card that we could play with. Seems fine. Let's do it. And then... Morsel Master is fine. The Morsel Maid is quite good. I really like the Morsel Maid. 
We've taken it a couple times, but we've always sacrificed it because it adds the hunger buff. But maybe we'll take it and we won't sacrifice it. Maybe we'll take it and we'll keep it. Let's take it. I probably want the Light of Seraph. We definitely draw a lot every turn. We have a few ways to get Ember. We don't have any ways to get more space. So let's take Light of Seraph. We can remove two on the left and get an artifact for free and a unit. That seems pretty nice. Let's go to the left. So, removing two. I'm definitely removing the last train steward. Train stewards are gone already. And then the root seeds seem pretty unimpressive. And then the plinks that I have not upgraded seem pretty unimpressive. Which one of those would I like to get rid of more? Probably the... Man, it's a hard choice. Probably the unupgraded plank. Let's get an artifact first. Friendly units enter with lifesteal 2. Not bad. That is a little bit questionable when we have Chain of Gems. And then the other one is Emblem of the Exiles, which I do really like. Let's take the Emblem of the Exiles. And then an Awoken Unit. Animus of Speed is fine. I really do like Shattered Shell, though. That sweep is very nice. And we can easily upgrade the attack on this one. Well, let's take it. Upgrade our champion. Remember that our champion gets 50% max health, so that really makes us want to choose this one. This one grants quick to all of our units. I really like quick on our units, but I think that having just a big chunky unit in the front with chain of gems really kind of makes up for not having quick. So let's take this one. Thornlord 2. Don't really want to go to the Divine Temple. Let's check what's inside, though. Yeah, I don't care too much about either of those. I mean, I like the Purge Stone, but I don't think I want the Pack Shards currently. So let's keep going without, without sacrificing units for now. Non-boss enemy units get multi-strike, and we get a random artifact. It doesn't seem too bad for them to have multi-strike, so let's get a random artifact. The 2 times 2 is just not very impressive. The plink does basically nothing at this point. This is an unupgraded plink. You can see how bad it is. Perils of Production doesn't do anything for us this turn, so we have kind of a bad turn. The Morsel Made, where do we want that? I guess we want that on Floor 2 or Floor 3. What else do we have? The Crucible Collector. The Crucible Collector could go on Floor 1 with our Wildenton. That's not bad. So let's play our Wildenton on floor one. We get the stings. The stings are really nice here. But even the stings don't bring him within range of Plink. And Morsel Maid will go on floor two. We'll figure you out next turn. And then play the Plink just for the encant value here. Our damage shield is already gone, but honestly, not worried about that. He has 106 health. Crucible Collector. We don't have a way to get morsels this turn. That's not very nice. I like the Shattered Shell. I like the Crucible Collector. 
I said that I wanted Crucible Collector at the bottom. I'm rethinking that. You are not getting very good yet because we don't have a way to get mor morsels. This one, you would eat the morsels immediately if we played this one next to you, which is kind of nice. And just wish we had more ember. I mean, we could have more ember with perils of production, but we would be using that ember this turn and not a future turn. That might be fine. So I think we're going to play Perils of Production this turn on one of our units. Which seems pretty strange. I don't like that. The Collector I would like to kill as well. What if we place the Crucible Collector at the top? So it, it has Ember Drain 1. And then we play the Morsel Maker here. And then we have to decide who we put Perils of Production on. And really there's two choices. You either put it on the Crucible Collector, who's at the top, and he'll have Ember Drain 3, or you place it on one of these, and they have Ember Drain 2. So Ember Drain 3 would mean we get 3 less next turn, 2 less the following turn. Ember Drain 2 here would mean we get 3 less the next turn, and 1 the following turn. So it's strictly better to put it on one of these. Although, does it matter which one? I guess we can put it on our champion. So he does more damage to that guy. Oh, you are healing him. That's why you're not getting the 21 damage. You are getting the 21 damage, but then you're losing it. So the Shattered Shell could kill this one. I like that. And then... I could either play Sharpen or Awoken's Rail Spike. The Awoken's Rail Spike would allow me to do something else this turn. But I would prefer to play it when we have more Ember. So let's play Sharpen. Sharpen works pretty well when we have the multi-strike on our enemies, too. So he's getting stronger, but he's going to die when he gets to the top, no problem. The real problem is this guy in the middle, who has 11 times 2 attack right now. We have no Ember this turn. Right, I kind of forgot about that. We gave up this turn. So this turn is nothing, <laughs> because we, we had Ember Drain 3 total on our units. And the real question is, what happens at the top? Well, actually, the middle and the top are both problematic. You're doing just fine. The top is not dying. The top not dying is not good. We want the top to die. So let's start with... Preserved Thorns? Actually, starting with Packed Morsels is pretty good, because we get to draw one from playing a Morsel unit. So you can just gain more health, basically. Have more health. I don't want to play anything up here, because that would give me more Ember Drain. So let's not play any units up there, even Morsels. You having some more damage shield could be fine, but actually have more health. Have more health. And then you can have a damage shield. It doesn't do a whole lot, but whatever. Forever could Consumed could take out a unit, or we could play Preserved Thorns and take out some units. And then the Plink, of course, will do something. So what I kind of want to do is play Preserved Thorns. That gives us damage. And then we can damage this one. 
So now that one dies. And then if we play Plink here, it has a chance to kill one of them. It's a low chance, but it doesn't cost anything to play it. We should probably play the Sting first, right? The Sting deals 10 damage, that would put it at 19, rather than 29. So we have a slightly better chance to kill it. That's not wonderful. I'm not going to bother. Let's just do this. Oh, we actually killed one. That's very surprising. That is not what you would expect. So, Morsel Excavator goes here. We could play the Forever Consumed for one to deal 30 damage. We also have a Sting to deal 10. Or we could play Root Seeds. Root Seeds on this guy is really nice. So these two will be taken care of on this floor plus the top floor. So let's ignore those guys and instead just do the sting down here and the root seeds because root seeds is really nice on this guy. All right. This one seems to be solved at this point. But it did take until this point until it felt like it was solved. A brief respite. We don't really need respites. Awoken Rail Spike. Can we do anything with that? We don't have a way to gain more Ember. I guess there's not a lot we can do this turn. We can play Sting. We could play a Plink and Hope. I don't think there's any point in doing that. So we could play more Stings, or we could play Awoken Rail Spike. None of the other x class cards are very meaningful to me, so let's play Awoken Rail Spike now. Except that we can't hold all the cards in our hand. So let's play a Sting first. All right, now Awoken Rail Spike. And at least we get to play those Root Seeds. We could do Ember Drain on a unit. Don't really like that. I don't need this turn to be any better, so let's not do that. You're not completely dying. Don't like that. We can't really change that, so let's do the root seeds here and here, and then worry about these guys next turn. Great. So far this has turned out pretty well. Our hand is full, we're not winning yet. And we're actually not killing anything up here because you die. So, the real question is, can we win this turn? And it looks like we have a pretty decent chance. Looks like we have a pretty decent chance. This plink has a good chance to kill this Clip Defender because of the piercing. Or we could use it up here. It has a smaller chance up here. But it has a really good chance if we use this Plink first. Which I think we might want to play up here anyway. So play this one. And then this one is guaranteed to kill both of those. So. Let's do this. That gains more energy this turn. And draws a card. We'll play the Rebel Morsel here. And then we can play Perils of Production on it. So Perils of Production on that Morsel. Let's see here. I guess there is not much we can do except use all three Stings. And then figure out what we're going to do for the rest. We're definitely going to play a big Prismal Dust, but is there anything better to do other than that Prismal Dust? 
I don't think so. Let's just do a big Prismal Dust. Ooh, we still don't win. I'm kind of surprised we're not winning here with all of that damage shield. I guess it's because of the spikes. So the spikes are taking out that damage shield pretty effectively. Oh well, we'll win on the next floor then. The damage shield 6 definitely did some good things anyway. Oh, my back unit died from the spikes. Interesting. But then we win this turn, so just click the end turn and win. What did we get? Petrified Crucible. I don't remember what that is. Spikes deal plus one damage per stack. Okay, I'll take that. Invigorating Solution draws three next turn. We really don't need that. We already have Preserved Thorns, and Awake doesn't seem like the thing we need in this particular deck. So let's skip. Descend friendly and enemy units on this floor. It's okay. Not what I want currently. Apply damage shield 1 to friendly units. Add 3 uncommon or rare morsels to your hand. Except that it costs 4. 4 to play. It's pretty good though. Costing 4 is pretty bad. But we could make that cost less. I'm going to take it in hopes to make it useful. The 4 cost is a pretty big barrier though. Oh man, I want to go this way because it has the unstable vortex. But I want to go this way because it has the Merchant of Magic. I guess let's go this way. It also has the Concealed Caverns. And the Merchant of Steel isn't bad. Are we going to this Divine Temple? Maybe. Maybe we're going to this Divine Temple. Let's look at the Divine Temple first. There's another True Stone. Those are pretty nice. And there's a Value Stone. Okay. So what I want to do is use Value Stone on the Gem Trove. That makes it a lot more playable. And then we've got 55 pack shards, so we should probably stop. How much more do we need? We need 45. We can get that pretty easily. Unstable Vortex removes maybe that last plank. Let's look at the Merchant of Steel first. This is a Merchant of Steel, not a Merchant of Magic. Never mind. We are going to remove a root seeds and this plank. Yes, this plank. Concealed caverns, what do we have? I keep finding new events in these, but this one is not new. The arcane machine. Let's press the button. I like building cards. So we could get a frostbite effect on an enemy unit, a regen unit effect on our unit, or a rage effect on our unit. I kind of don't care for most of these, but I guess the most that I care for is the regen. The life icon. Damage, heal, or buff. What does buff mean? I never remember what the buff actually means. The smooth waves seems like not necessary when you just put regen on the unit. So I guess it's going to be a buff. And then... Card draw or gold. We don't need the card draw. Let's get gold. Alright. What does it look like this time? Apply regen 4, gain 10 attack. I like that. And gain 20 money. I think that's not bad. The Merchant of Steel. 
quick, exactly what I want. I want quick on the shattered shell. There we go, shattered shell gets quick. Now then, the shield stone and the thorn stone are both really nice. Thorn stone could go on the morsel maid, I guess. Let's put it on the morsel maid. And then I guess it also gets damage shield three because I still don't care about that on the shattered shell. I'd rather have the shattered shell have 25 more health. So let's put damage shield on our morsel maid. And reroll. Plus 10 and spikes 3. Well, I could put plus 10 on our shattered shell. Fine. Plus 10 and spikes 3. Fine. It's not my favorite. And then I don't think I'm going to buy the shield stone. Because I still intend to sacrifice my final unit there. All right, the Crystal Cloak. Stealth 8. Don't like the Stealth 8. Non-boss enemy units get plus 6 attack. Doesn't seem so bad. Doesn't seem so bad. This might be the last trial that we turn on, though. Because we're getting further up, and the further up, the more dangerous the trials are. But, like, these guys having more, having more attack doesn't matter because we get three sting spells on the first turn. And we also have a plink. Okay, so we can't play everything that I want to play. If we can't play everything that I want to play, what do we play? I do want to play the plink because I really want to get the morsels. But maybe we skip it? And instead play Morsel Maid and Crucible Collector? I think what I'm going to do is keep the Morsel Maid for later. We're going to play Wildenton down here. So you are going to get Armor 10, which is kind of sad. We're going to play Plink down here, which gave me two morsels, actually. We're going to play one of those morsels down here. That will draw a card. Glimmer. Okay, we didn't need that card. We'll play the Crucible Collector here. Give him a morsel as well. And sting this guy a bunch. And then root seeds because there's no reason not to. And in theory, he's going to die next turn because of our Crucible Collector up there. Old Magic. I like Old Magic. We kind of drew too many X cost cards. Too many at one time. Although we do have five energy this turn, so it's a good time to draw X cost cards. The Morsel Maker. Morsel Maker could go here. I kind of like that on the second floor. What are we going to put on the first floor? The Shattered Shell, of course. So Morsel Maker could go on the second floor or the third floor. Both of those are fine options. And other than that, I don't really care about most of these cards. I guess the old magic is nice. And then the forever consumed is nice. I'm trying to think of whether I'm playing that or whether I'm playing Awoken Rail Spike. Draw cards. Maybe it's not the best time for that. Maybe we play Forever Consumed. Kill this one. So the Morsel Maker we're going to put on the top floor. 
And then we're going to play Old Magic. We do not need that here, I don't think. Ninety damage currently. You're going to restore ten health. Hmm. Do I play old magic down here? Or do I play it here? If I play it here, this one has a a perfect chance to die next turn. If I don't, then it has a lower chance to die next turn. I do want it to die next turn, so let's play Old Magic here. And then we'll play Forever Consumed here, which doesn't quite kill this one anymore. Now that I'm not doing what I what I wanted to playing that card down this down here. But in any event, we kill the collector, which is always good. The bottom floor is not looking great, but the other two floors are looking fine. The bottom floor finally gets its thing, so we play the Shattered Shell down here. That will make the bottom floor much better. And then we can get a bunch of Ember this turn, as long as Plink kills a unit. Oh, he's not dying. Because he kills this one, he gains armor 10. Oh, I don't like that. I want to plink here because this is a better place to use plink. But I kind of don't. We could play sharpen on this unit. Kind of weird. All right, well, let's play Plink here, because this is where we want the enemies to die. And then we can play the Morsel Excavator here. We got Gem Trove. That's pretty nice. So Perils of Production on this one. Actually, Perils of Production on this one makes it so that he dies. Great. Now, Gem Trove can go at the bottom. You're both dying now, that's great. So the top and the second floor are doing just fine. So let's play Gem Trove at the bottom. Get a bunch of Morsel units. We will play Sharpen at the bottom too. And we'll play a Prismal Dust at the bottom as well. All right, so the bottom is doing great now. I mean, the enemies aren't dying, which is the main problem. Let's do a Magma Morsel here. And then the other two Morsels here. There. Now I feel like this is going just fine. We have units going up the three floors, but they are slowly dying as they go. And having the sweep, the quick sweep unit at the bottom is really nice. We drew packed morsels, which means we get to draw a card once we play a morsel. So let's play packed morsels. And what do we want to play at the bottom? I guess a Morsel Jeweler at the bottom. We drew Sting. Hmm. I want this one to die. But that one is the hardest to kill, unless the Plink hits it. Plink. There we go. We got it. Now, where do we put our Morsels? We can't put them at the bottom. Don't really care to put them at the top, so I guess they go in the center. There we go. Easy decision. Preserved thorns will get us stings. I do like getting stings. Mostly what I'm thinking right now is that I want this guy to die. So let's deal him a bunch of damage. Preserved thorns gets more stings. Deal more stings to this guy. 
and then razor sharp edge can go here very effective place for razor sharp edge now you're not dying yet but you might not make it to the top which is what i'm hoping Oh, that one has two health. The Mortal Maid goes at the top. And if I put Mortal Maid at the top, he immediately eats those two. That is what I want, right? And then we get Plink here. So Mortal Maid at the top. You didn't eat them? Don't you eat them immediately? Oh, it only happens when they're summoned. Oh. I did not realize that. Okay, well, Plink goes here. We did get a Morsel unit, so we can play it here. Oh, he ate all of them because I summoned one. Oh. Did not expect it to work that way. Very glad that I did it that way, so I could see what happened. And I think we play the Awoken Rail Spike this turn. Draw three of these cards? Yeah. So we got Razor Sharp Edge, which is great down here. Perils of Production. I don't know if we want to play that. We can kill this one with Forever Consumed. No, we don't have any any Ember at all. Okay. Let's play Root Seeds there and decide whether we want Perils of Production. We would have no Ember next turn if we played this. So let's not play it. How about that? Let's see if we win already. So we're not... Well, we are killing at the top. We are not winning currently. We do have Forever Consumed in our hand. We have Glimmer. We have a lot of Ember that we can get. Regen 4 is not bad. The Razor Sharp Edge we can put on the back one. Although that's not the best one to put it on because this one has 14 attack. So maybe we should put it on the front one so that this one doesn't die in one hit. Let's start there. Razor Sharp Edge here. And then Old Magic here. And then a Sting, of course. And then Perils of Production because there's no next turn where these guys survive. So just play Perils of Production. And 180 damage is not enough, but it is a lot of damage, so let's deal it. And we will at least take all of the stealth off that unit. So the Crystal Cloak will lose all of his stealth, which means he's going to die on 4-2. Ooh, you made it all the way past that one? Okay. Did not realize that our champion was dying before the stealth came off. And we're already winning. Just click the end turn button and win. Alright, two turn boss rush because of the stealth. Got lots of money. Don't care about focus growth. Don't care about an invigorating solution. Ramble Lash. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to 10 times the amount of spikes on friendly units. You know that would be better in a different deck. Let's skip these. Crucible Extension is not terrible. Grovel is fine. Grovel is fine. And we already have a gem trove. Don't think I can ha handle two gem troves. Do I want a grovel? I kind of don't. It's a lesser gem trove, but I have less time to make it worthwhile. 
So let's not take it. Just skip again. And where are we going here? So on the left, we've got concealed caverns. Those have been pretty kind to me. Another merchant of steel, which I think we strictly do not need. Yeah, we don't need the merchant of steel. And some money. Or a free artifact. Some expensive artifacts. Higher health, which is fine. We could actually use some. And yeah, I think we're going to the right. Let's go to the right. Get the Pyre Health first. The Herzl's Horde, I guess. The first time each turn a friendly unit is healed, draw one. We Do we heal our units? We actually do, but only with old magic. So I don't think that's too great. I do like Conscription Notice. Let's get Conscription Notice. And then Merchant of Trinkets. Ooh, I've never seen this before. Commemorative Spike. At the start of battle, summon a Morsel Miner on each floor. Oh, that's not bad. Commemorative Spike. The Jack Strips is perfectly fine. The Pyre Wall is fine. I guess let's take Commemorative Spike and reroll. <laughs> Morsel units enter with damage shield 1. Never seen that before. Actually, I think we've seen it because we unlocked it, but we haven't actually played with it. Held's Banners is pretty nice. Does that count when we're playing Morsel units? Ooh, does Held's Banners work extremely well with Morsel units? I think it does. And we can take it, because what we do is we leave here, we get Divine Boons, and then we go back in, and we take Hell's Banners. Excellent. I hope that works how I think it does. According to what it says, according to the words on the screen, it should work. Let's see if it does. Arcus, Darkness Incarnate. So threat level high still because I keep taking pack shards. The looming dark shard, we can't play spells on that floor. The blinding dark shard, we can't summon non-morsel units on that floor. So summon and spell. Those are the two things I cannot do. Oh, we got, we got three extra Ember for just the Morsel Miners appearing from Commemorative Spike. That's really nice. The one downside here is that this one has Damage Shield. It has Damage Shield because of Chain of Gems, which means we don't get to give our Wildentin Damage Shield. Which is kind of sad. Also... This kind of says we don't want to play units here. I mean, it only da adds Dazed 1, so maybe we do anyway. But I really want to add two units there, which is kind of a problem. It's kind of a problem, because that would add Dazed 2 on the bottom. Still, I think I do it. It's just a very strange thing to do. So, add a Wildenton. Wildenton gets Dazed 1. We get Branded Warrior, which we can place on another floor. The Branded Warrior getting the benefit here is pretty nice because it has terrible stats at the beginning. And it gets better stats with Conscription Notice. So what do I do? I think putting things on the top floor is fine this time. Let's put the Branded Warrior on the top floor. Top floor. That does add Ember Drain. Now then, let's do a Plink. 
we will add our shattered shell down here, which my understanding is that the shattered shell will have one dazed and the other two down here will have two dazed. Yes, okay, that's what I wanted. Then we can add old magic to it. So next turn it can actually deal damage. And then I guess we kill the Syncophant and sting the boss a couple times. Add damage shield to our units. And then add a whole bunch of morsels. So we already got the Ember Drain up here, so there's no downside to having more morsels up here. Ooh, Root Seeds. Let's do that one here. Morsel Jeweler. <laughs> we have a whole bunch of Morsel Jewelers. And then we can't fit them all, so let's put one on this floor too. Alright, he eats a whole lot. He's got tons of damage shield. So we cannot play spells at the bottom. And our champion is still dazed, but you are going to kill a unit down here. So we're actually doing quite fine at the bottom. We could play our Morsel Maid on the middle and the Crucible Collector at the top. That's one possibility. Or we can play Morsel Maid at the top. I have multiple things I want to do. Let's play the Crucible Collector in the in the center floor. I think that's where I want him the most. So we'll play him there. And then I just realized we have to play a Morsel unit before Hell's Banners will give us some energy. So let's do that. Play a Morsel unit. I want... I want Morsel Excavator here. Now, we've got energy. We can get more energy with Perils of Production. We'll do that. And then let's play the Morsel Maid at the top. Morsel Maid at the top. Let's put him... Let's put him in the middle. I actually don't know how this is going to work. So the Morsel Maker is going to go here too. And the question is... Does the Morsel Maid eat the units, or does the Branded Warrior eat the units? That's the question I'm asking, because the Morsel Maid is not in the front. Oh, it eats it anyway. Okay, so, we have learned a thing. I do want to draw more cards next turn, so let's play Preserved Thorns. So we can draw lots of cards. And then, who do we sharpen? considering we don't want to play spells down here. I guess let's sharpen the Crucible Collector. And we're done. That was a pretty solid turn. And I like my deck. I think my deck is pretty good. So we cannot play units at the top non-morsel units, so we're actually just fine. You are already dying because of the spikes. So, what else do we do? We've got Perils of Production, we've got Plink. I guess we play Plink at the bottom first. Do we have enough card space in our hand to hold two morsels? We do. So let's do this. And we got two morsels even. All right. I want a Rebel Morsel to be here. And I want a Rebel Morsel to go up here. Now, Perils of Production on this one. And then we can play... Wow, we have eight. We have eight Ember. All right. Well, you're going to get more attack value. And then you're going to get even more attack value. We will 
If we play this now, we won't be able to draw all, all six cards. So let's give you even more attack value. And then we'll play Awoken's Rail Spike. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it made the stings cost zero, and they already cost zero. Oh. He gets Encant. <laughs> There's no reason to play a sting on him. There's no reason to play a sting on you either. I guess the reason is because we have Encant too. We could play Perils of Production. That means that he would get a lot more life. I think we will stop for this turn. Stop for this turn. The enemy encant monsters are a slight problem. A slight problem. The looming dark shards are a bigger problem. That one right there, for example. So gem trove we could play at the bottom. I like that. Gem trove at the bottom. That gives us morsels. Then we can play these morsels up here. That draws us a card. It is Plink, which I don't know that we can do much with Plink. Let's just use Sting a couple of times. Is there any more value of hitting this one with Stings? I guess there is because we can do Forever Consumed. Yeah, I guess so. So let's play a Magma Morsel down here. That gives us a whole bunch of Ember. And then we can play Forever Consumed whenever we want. Which will destroy this guy. Or we could play Forever Consumed up here. And let this guy die. Why are you dying? And you're taking 54? Oh, you attack first, of course. So where do I want my morsel units to go? I guess I want them up here. And I guess we'll play Sting, 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 Plink, and Forever Consumed all against the boss. There. We've got our Prismal Dust just waiting. Waiting for us to care to play it. So now the boss no longer has stealth. Which means the boss gets damaged when we do stuff. We have so many stings in our hand. We also have a plink. So I guess we play a whole bunch of things at the bottom. There's a blinding dark shard, not a looming dark shard. Sting, 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 sting. We'll play Plink, hope really hard that it hits the Sycophant right there. Did not. We could play Ember Drain on one of our units to gain energy this turn. Don't really see a reason to do that. So let's just do this. And this turn was okay. We get to keep that ember across the turn, the ember that we got from the morsel maker. I think we do. We do. Oh, so this turn is pretty good. We cannot play spells at the top, or it would at least be dumb to play spells at the top. So instead, we will, we will play a whole bunch of spells at the bottom. I want Plink at the bottom. We can play a Magma Morsel at the top. Deal a little bit more damage at the top. Ooh, we can play Forever Consumed at the top. Now that's interesting to me. Old Magic. Old Magic could go anywhere except for the top. Don't play spells at the top. Okay, so what I really want to do is play Old Magic, Sharpen, 
forever consumed takes him out. Let's do a razor sharp edge on our champion this time, because you're getting pretty low in health. And then we do forever consumed. And end the turn. We will have another six energy next turn because the Morsel Maker is giving us more energy. It's kind of nice. Not an expected circumstance, but kind of nice. I actually need to keep the Morsel Maker in my deck now. I was going to delete it, but now I need to keep it. I cannot play units on this floor, that's not a problem. I guess we. We don't care what we play. So, Sting. We can play Prismal Dust on a unit. Play Old Magic here, I guess. And then either Prismal Dust or Forever Consumed. Prismal Dust. And then next turn, we should win no problem at all against the boss. We will even have six energy again, and we're we're winning against the boss without playing anything this turn. So we just win. This has gone very well. Take that, Arcus. Now then, wretch. We do not. How much do we care about Wretch? Do we care? I don't think so. We could play Cycle of Life, which I've never played with before. It goes really well with the Petrified Crucible. I do like adding a whole bunch of spikes to my units. So let's take it. I'm not sure that that's a good decision. We still do not need Herzl's Compound. It does not seem like we need Light of Seraph either, so let's take Fel's Remorse. And what do we do? So we've got only two places to go. We're going to use that Divine Temple. One of the things that I could do is go to the Hellvent, duplicate one of my units with the intent on sacrificing that one and the next one. I think I like that plan. So let's go here. Let's upgrade our champion. Woohoo, the Encant gives three attack. I like that. Let's take the Thorn Lord three. That also increases his health, which means Mark of an Exile increases it even more. Let's do that. Let's go to the Concealed Caverns next. Remains of the once great Rail of the Covenant. Ooh, I like this one. So, we can upgrade a unit to give it plus 20 attack and plus 20 health, but we it gets Purge, so we can only play it one time. Or... We can increase the magic power by 20 and add Purge to a to one of our spells. I think I'm going to take the second one. And give that to Glimmer. Because the Glimmer hasn't really done much for us. So I wouldn't mind it being Purged. There. Great. We don't need the Pyre Health. Let's get the Divine Artifact first. Friendly units get plus one attack per stack of spikes. That's pretty nice. Also, the first Hell Pact is really nice. We have three x cost cards, I think. Awoken's Rail Spike, that works really well on. For Forever Consumed would always deal 90 damage. Yeah, I think we have to take the first Pell Pact here. This is just way too good. And let's duplicate a card. 
So if we're duplicating a card, which one... We're basically duplicating a monster that we intend to sacrifice. So, which has the best essence? The Morsel Made Essence is nice, but I kind of like my Morsels to be around on some floor so we can use the Perils of Production on them. The Morsel Maker, I kind of like. Let's duplicate the Morsel Maker. and then intend to sacrifice one of them, but not both of them. Great, and let's move on. We're only at threat level medium now. Winged acquainted with the power of death, they consume the souls of their victims to heal and grow stronger. They have slay. So non-boss enemy units getting plus eight attack. Still doesn't seem that bad. I mean, the Gilded Wing having plus 8 attack is kind of bad. Because he might make it to the Pyre. I'm still going to turn it on. I think of the, of the possible trials, this one is not so bad for us. So then, the Wildington is pretty bad at the bottom right now. There's so much damage at the bottom. Still, it's not too bad. We can play Prismal Dust on it on the first turn even. I guess let's play Plink first. Or actually, there's no reason to play it first because we get the Encant value. So let's play Wildenton here. We get a Paraffin Thug. I like the Paraffin Thug. So the Stings aren't going to do much. Let's play the Stings. The Plink might kill the center one. It did. Great. That means we get to play a Morsel, which means we get to draw a card. I think we want our Morsel Made unit to be at the top. So let's put it at the top, even though that gives Ember Drain. And then put the Morsel unit behind it. Actually, we could have played the, Mors the Magma Morsel first. I did not think of that. I could have played the Magma Morsel first and then the Morsel made and then not taken the Ember Drain next turn. Because there's no reason he needs to eat those now. Okay, so we're definitely playing this so that we get to draw 10 cards next turn. And let's play our Paraffin Thug on floor two. He might not last very long. I don't really know, but we're playing him. And then apply seven damage shield to our champion. Okay, things are only going okay so far. As you can see, it's the gilded, the gilded wings that are the problem because I have a hard time getting through all of their health. All right, we drew lots of cards. That's exactly what I wanted because we can play Shattered Shell at the bottom. And that should take care of these Shade Wings that keep appearing. So this floor is where we want to play Plink. So let's play Plink here. Ho-ho, it killed the Shade Wing. That's perfect. Now then, let's play the... Shattered Shell at the bottom. We know we want that. And then the problem is we have so little Ember. We'll get more right here with the Rubble Morsel. And then what? We have a lot of Ember now. The Morsel Maker is going to go up here. We don't get the Ember Drain from it because we played a Morsel up here already. It just got eaten immediately. Crucible Collector, we probably want that to be in the center. Collector is not dying. Unless we kill this one with the Forever Consumed. 
we really need razor sharp edge on you. Let's do that. And then we're not drawing many cards next turn. Let's do another razor sharp edge. Oh, and if we do one more, we kill this one. Oh, but I'd rather... I really want to play the Crucible Collector. Hard choices. I think we should play this, because being able to kill these outright, quick sweep, is pretty excellent. And the Forever Consumed still does 90 damage. So let's kill this one. That will also allow us to kill the Collector. We are getting a fair amount of money here because of the Collector, and because of our Paraffin Thug, and because of our our orb that we made that gives us money too. All right, so you are handling the bottom just fine now. Oh right, we have another Morsel Maker. I forgot that we had that many. We could play them all at the top, or we could not. Kind of want to play the Gem Trove at the bottom. Let's start there. So start with the Gem Trove at the bottom. Play the Morsel Maker here. And some Morsels. So I want the Morsel Excavator here. And I want the Ant Umber Morsel here. I want the Morsel Jeweler at the top. And we'll play Packed Morsels at the bottom, but we'll play the Morsels elsewhere. Let's see here. Where do we play them? Maybe at the top? You're dying, so I actually do want them at the top. Let's make this one a lot stronger. And then we get to play Perils of Production on one of you. Doesn't matter which one. And then we get Awoken's Rail Spike to draw six cards. Or actually, nine cards. Nine cards? All right. We can't hold nine cards. I'm actually not going to play the Glimmer with the small chance that we will get to Divinity Master it because I never play it. So unless things are going poor, I'm just not going to play Glimmer. Now then, we got another Perils of Production. So let's play that again. We're going to play that one on this one this time. And then what? Oh, we have another Perils of Production. Let's do it on this one. All right. Now we're dealing 14 to that one. That's what I wanted to see. And Root Seeds on you, definitely. Sting. Sting could go here. The old magic, we want that here. No, here. And then Razor Sharp Edge, how low do we want you to go? I think 14 is fine. Sharpen goes here, though. And then let's put a Root Seeds here and be done with this turn. Great. I think that this battle is now solved. The Gilded Wings are making it to the top, but they die when they get there. Oh, he's not dying. Well, Forever Consumed could kill him. Or several other possibilities. For one, we could play the Crucible Collector at the top, or we could play it in the center. So everything down here is dying quickly, except for the big one in the center. I guess that means we want to play our stings elsewhere. So sting, 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 and sting. You're dying now. We play a sting down here. We play a plink down here. We get two of those. Great. 
So, where are we playing them? Both at the top? Both at the top. Gem Trove gives us even more. Let's play the Crucible Collector in... Oh, it doesn't fit in the center. I guess we'll play it at the top then. There we go. Goes at the top. Gem Trove will add damage shield to the units down here. And give us more morsels. And then we will play two of those morsels because... Oh, actually we can play three. Great. So, which three do we want? This one... And this one, and then this one. Now, 210 damage right here. Now both of you are dying. Great. Everything dies this turn, which means we've got a clean slate starting next turn. And the only thing that survives here is the Gilded Wing. We've got old magic. Just keep placing old magic on this one. Razor sharp edge. How low do we want your health to go? Not that low. We can play a plink here, which will probably kill one. It did not. And then... I guess we play the stings down here because of the encant value. So, sting, sting. We don't get to play Perils of Production this turn. Oh, we do, because of these. I forgot about those. Perils of Production. And now we can play Cycle of Life on you. And... Razor Sharp Edge on you. Root Seeds on the one in the back. Now you're taking 92. So the Gilded Wing still makes it to the top. Only if it has the shard enhancing, though, because of my pack shards that I've taken. So he'll make it to the top, but he's not going to make it much farther. Also, we drew Forever Consumed, so he probably won't even make it there. Sting, sting, sting. Root seeds. And then forever consume. 240 damage. Bam. Alright. Done with that turn. We have six energy starting next turn, or seven actually, because of Fell's Remorse. But the extra three came from Hell's Banners. And you're not dying immediately. I'm very surprised that you're not dying immediately, but we will take care of that. No problem. Clink. Great. We can play a rubble morsel up uh, We can't do it up there. All right. Play the rubble morsels here. Sting. We can get a gem trove, we can do root seeds, razor sharp edge. Ooh, you have 50 attack. I guess let's do gem trove. And yes, a morsel jeweler essentially gives our champion 50 more health. And we win. So click and turn and win. So this has gone pretty cleanly so far. I'm pretty happy about that. Let's see if we can close it out. We did get the trial bonus there. We are still using trials. So I don't need the Wildwood Custodian at all. The Bramble Lash is better than it was before but still seems pretty unnecessary. How many things do we have that give spikes? We have the cycle of life and we have 
sharpen. Okay, yeah, we're not taking Bramble Lash. And we don't really need Restoring Retreat either. So let's just skip. Excavation Eruption is fun. Ooh, Ember Cache. Ember Cache is very nice. And then Void Binding, I don't know if I've seen this before. Apply Damage Shield 2, Rage 6, and Ember Drain 3. If there was a deck that could handle that, it's probably this one. I will take it. Now, we are going to go to the Divine Temple. I probably want the Merchant of Magic more than the Merchant of Steel. And we could remove two cards. Honestly, removing Root Seeds is pretty nice. Maybe removing... Maybe removing two Root Seeds is fine. Okay, let's go to the right. Now, let's look at the Divine Temple first. We are going to sacrifice a unit. We're going to sacrifice a Morsel Maker. And we're going to sacrifice it to the Shattered Shell. So the Shattered Shell just grows over time. There we go. Now then, we still need... Oh, we actually have 105 pack shards. Great. So we don't need more pack shards. We can remove two cards. We can buy stuff. Higher health having more. The Teeth of Gold is fine. But in the... As we learned recently in the Divinity, the last Divinity battle... This only hits the last divinity, which is not great. So let's let's put all of these at pretty low priority and instead look at the Merchant of Magic. We could add permafrost to another spell. I kind of like that. Let's look at it from here. The Awoken's Rail Spike is one that could have permafrost. because I don't always want to play it. Surge Stone. We could put that on that Plink. We would not be able to draw the Plink anymore. Kind of like that Plink. So maybe not. The Ember Stone we're definitely getting. It could go on Gem Trove, it could go on Prismal Dust, Old Magic, Forever Consumed, it could go on Awoken Rail Spike. Let's put it on Awoken's Rail Spike. Well, maybe not that one, actually. I don't know how to tell it not to. Let's go put it on Sharpen. And then make make the Awoken Rail Spike permafrost, so we get to play it when we want to. And then reroll. Hold over. That's pretty interesting. Forever Consumed could be hold over. It does 90 damage, guaranteed. What else would I want Holdover on? Not much. So maybe we put that at low priority. Power Stone. We want that on the Plink. So this Plink gets a Power Stone. Ember Stone. We want that on... Forever Consumed. And then now I really do want Holdover on Forever Consumed. So let's do that. So now we have... We have enough essentially to buy two... Two of these. And what I really want to do is re-roll. And buy one of these two. 
Sting spells get plus 20 magic power. We have a lot of sting spells. Let's get that. And then spells get an up extra upgrade slot doesn't do much since we just bought all the upgrades. Trader's Quill is fine. And then we've spent our money. We have not removed the cards yet. We've not clicked that button. We have our pack shards. So let's remove two root seeds. Remove two root seeds. We could remove one razor sharp edge, actually. Yeah, let's remove one of these. Well, no, because I still like them. Let's remove another root seeds. Okay. Now, let's go into the final gauntlet. So, Seraph will, re will remove half of any buff and debuff. Those are the spikes and the regen that get removed from our units. I don't think we have any buff or debuff that we add to enemy units. Wildenton definitely goes at the bottom. Let's start there. We got Guard of the Unnamed. Ooh. So let's think about this. We normally want the Shattered Shell at the bottom. That costs two. If we played the Guard of the Unnamed, we would have two slots, but we could never play Morsels at the bottom. But then we would have two Encant units on the same floor, which is really nice. Granted, this Encant is Armor 3, which is not very important when the Wildenton is going to be in the front. Okay, well, I guess let's put it on a different floor then. Sting goes, whoa, Sting does 30 damage. Right, Sting does 30 damage. Crucible Collector is going to go here. And let's put the Guard of the Unnamed in front of him. There. Now, there's no reason to hit that floor, so let's hit this floor really hard. I guess we play Preserve Thorns first, and then we can play this one first. Just take that unit out immediately. Bam. And then sting this one so that that one dies. Sting this one so we do 15 more damage to the boss. And then let's do a whole bunch more damage to the boss. Okay, that was a pretty good first turn. And we have our holdover spell, so we get to do a whole bunch of damage every turn to the front unit. We did get the Shattered Shell. Perfect. So this one goes at the bottom. We know that's going at the bottom. That kills all of those lightnings. We have a Plink, which I guess we should play that here. It got one Morsel. We also have Packed Morsels, too. So let's play Morsel Made at the top. We know that we want it at the top. That gives us Ember Drain 1 next turn. We also want Morsel Maker at the top. And now we can play Morsels. So what do we want in the middle? I guess let's play Packed Morsels to see what Morsels we have. I want Magma Morsel in the middle. And we get a Plink. All right, so we have even more Morsels. Let's play Perils of Production, because we know we're going to do that. Let's play Old Magic, because we know we're going to do that. Now, I want to play the Forever Consumed so that we don't get the Ember Drain from this one. And I want it to do 
I want it to do 210 damage. So if we play one more, it's perfectly fine. So play one more. And then we do 210 damage. And then we have a bunch of morsels we can play, and we can also draw three cards. Or four cards if we use the Rubble Morsel. Great. You will get this Morsel too. You are going to get a Damage Shield Morsel. And then Morsel Excavator can go here. So, now we play Awoken Rail Spike. We got Perils of Production. Alright, let's do that. The Razor Sharp Edge can go here. And there again. And the Root Seeds. And then let's do Damage Shield 6 on our champion. That was a good turn. So what happens next is the question. Some Gilded Wings. We don't like the Gilded Wing. Ho oh, ho. Damage Shield 2, Rage 6, Ember Drain 3. I mean, the Ember Drain 3 hurts, but it doesn't hurt that much. So let's do that. Rage 6 on you. I like the Rage 6 on you. On the other hand, we could not play this and instead play Cycle of Life. I guess either way, we're starting with Gem Trove. Because that gives us Morsels. And we can play Morsels. Which draws us Perils of Production. Alright. So now we have even more Ember this turn. Even more Ember this turn means that we probably play Void Binding. Forever Consumed kills this one. Yeah. So let's play all of our cards. Void Binding on you. Cycle of Life on you. Sharpen on you. And then Forever Consumed kills the front unit. And then we don't play Glimmer because we're holding out on being able to Divinity Master it by keeping it through this entire run. Now, this turn we will have very little Ember. Which doesn't matter much, because we still get to kill this one. And we can use a Plink, which will give us even more Ember for this turn. Like this. Actually, we don't need it this turn, so let's play it for next turn. Like that. So then we can play Forever Consumed, kill that one. And then these deal 30 damage. Let's hit this one hard, at the bottom. And I feel like we're doing just fine. Now we've got three extra Ember for next turn, because we didn't play two units until the end of that turn. And we get two Ember Drain. So in total, we still have six... No, in total, yeah. In total, we still have six Ember. Which is a lot, actually. That's a lot. We can Plink. Let's start with the Plink, because that could get us... Should we play it on this floor? It would guarantee give us a thing on this floor, but I don't care about the units that much. It hit the front one. Don't like that. Razor Sharp Edge can go there. Sting can hit the front one. Why not? Old Magic can go here, too. Root Seeds can go here. Razor Sharp Edge can go here. Gem Trove. 
You are still dealing 180 damage. Let's do that now. And then Magma Morsel, Morsel Jeweler, Morsel Jeweler will go there. We can get even more Ember. We don't need it. It doesn't do anything. But we have it if we want it. All right. Well, this battle is going very well. You know, I just realized that Seraph is also removing my damage shields. I don't like that. Yeah, it removed the damage shield because damage shield is a buff. Plink. Plink could kill this unit and give us a morsel. Giving us a morsel means that we can draw a card, which is a dead weight. Old magic means that we gain more, uh, more gold, which we don't care about anymore, but kind of like it. And then Forever Consumed kills this one. Those other two are dying. We hit the boss. Hit the boss real hard. I'm going to use a razor sharp edge here just to hit the boss a little bit more. And frankly, I think we have won this battle. It's just the matter of going through it. So then, we can use Plink. Let's use Plink here. That gives us a guaranteed morsel. We can play that morsel and use Perils of Production on, on it. All of these guys are dying already, which means we don't need to do anything down here. I guess what we'll do is use Sting, Sting, Gem Trove, or just Forever Consumed. Forever consumed, 420 damage on the boss. And a Root Seeds we still have. Okay. Root Seeds, we deal even more damage on the boss. When you just start damaging the boss, because you don't care about the other units, you know you're doing fine. So, are we already winning? We are. Click the End Turn button and win. All right, that was a very clean Seraph fight. Now for the last divinity. Once Seraph dies, that is. Which might take a while. All right, let's move on to the final battle. I feel pretty good about this. We might take some damage on the pyre. We might but I think we'll still win. I don't know that we will be able to defeat every monster before it reaches the top, so we might take some damage, but not enough damage, I think, to kill us. You gain damage on attack, all right? We did not draw what I really wanted to draw. We did draw a Plink. Plink is a good thing to play first. Right? Actually, if we play... If we play Wildenton first. Ooh. Horned Warrior Multi-Strike 1. That's nice. So, if we play Sting here and Sting here again, then the Plink has a much higher chance to kill two enemies down here. It only killed one. It dealt you some damage, though. So, Sting this one. You are not dying, you're not dying. That's kind of sad. We can add a lot of damage shield to our front unit. Don't mind that. The Crucible Collector is going to go up here. With the Horned Warrior behind him. 
and the Horned Warrior is going to get the Razor Sharp Edge. Let's deal some damage to the boss. Oh, you got Damage Shield. <laughs> this one got Damage Shield from the Chain of Gems, so it's not dying this turn. How about that? Rubble Morsel at the bottom. Or the middle. Put it at the bottom. Ooh, we got another Plink. Great. So now we can defeat the back one down here, maybe. <laughs> nope, still no. <laughs> you are very... You're very good at dodging, sir. But we will apply 7 damage shield to our unit down here. Alright. So we're going, we are going to be doing a lot of damage to the boss every turn on this floor. And because he has lifesteal 1 on Gorge, I think that he will be fine surviving. Which means I think we might be defeating the last divinity pretty easily. Because we will be dealing damage every turn, probably. Let's hope so. We drew our Shattered Shell. That was an important part of doing well. So, Shattered Shell first. We do get the Morsel made, which we can put at the top. And the Morsel Maker. So, Morsel made at the top. With the Morsel Maker. And then... We can play Packed Morsels. Oh, if we play Packed Morsels heal here, it will do 30 damage. Do I want to do it at the bottom instead? Not particularly. Let's do it in the center. Now, let's play a Morsel unit at the top. How about... Morsel Excavator. We draw Sharpen. Great. Sharpen is a good one. So we will Sharpen you. And we will play a Morsel unit here. Ant Umber Morsel seems like the right one. And then do Perils of Production. Magma Morsel will do down here. The Cycle of Life we're going to do here. Oh. Oh, you've got spikes. Darn. That was the wrong place to put the Magma Morsel. Oh well. The Root Seeds go here, and the Cycle of Life goes here. Now you die. Great. Oh, I just realized that the sweep at the top means that the Morsel Maker is going to eventually die. That's not good. And by eventually, I mean, I think next turn. <laughs> so our morsels will dry up a little bit, which is not good for us. We can play regen, but you won't survive. Damage shield 2, though. So we could play damage shield 2 on you, which means you would survive two turns. I like that. In the meantime, you get... you are not an Encant one. So we can play Gem Trove down here, and it's perfectly fine. Now then... I want to play an Ant Umber Morsel here. We drew a card. Let's play a Morsel... Morsel Excavator here. I like you having lots of life steal. Let's play the Void Binding on you, since that means we get to keep you. And then Old Magic as well, so you regenerate your health a little bit. The Razor Sharp Edge definitely goes on you, because now you take care of things more effectively. Magma Morsel can go here. And then Forever Consumed... 
I guess that can go here, because doing it at the bottom doesn't do much. Does it do much here? What it does here is means that our Morsel Excavator will survive. That's good enough for me. Alright, and I don't think I need to play the Glimmer. Which means we should be able to master Glimmer. Because I never played it, but I added it to my deck. Which is a questionable way of saying master the card, but still. The best thing to do with this card is to never play it. Ooh, I want to play Awoken's Rail Spike. And Preserved Thorns. Okay. There may be a problem this turn. We can't do much. So you're not taking much damage. Preserved Thorns and a whole bunch of Stings makes up for that a little bit. Let's play Forever Consumed here to kill that one. And then play Awoken Rail Spike. We could save it for when we have more Ember. I think I want to save it. So in the meantime, let's play Stings somewhere. We could play it in the middle so that we kill this unit. I guess that doesn't really matter. So let's play it at the bottom because this unit is going to have a hard time dying. We might make it to the top. Next turn should be good though, because we have the Awoken's Rail Spike and we have extra energy. Not a whole lot, because we still have Ember Drain. Ooh, Perils of Production is good. So the Forever Consume... Forever Consumed does some damage, but we're going to play Awoken Rail Spike. So, where are we going to start? Where to start on this turn is the hard part. I guess we want to sting you a lot. So sting you, sting you, and then Plink can go... Plink is not very useful. I guess we'll play it at the bottom. Fine. Heralds of Production we can play after we play Gem Trove. So Gem Trove first. And then we have Morsel units. You, I want to have lots of lifesteal, so you're going to have this one. Cycle of Life is pretty nice. Magma Morsel goes here. Morsel Jeweler goes at the bottom. Those are our Morsels. Now, I think let's play Cycle of Life next. I want to put that on you, so that you survive longer. I might want to put Void Binding on you, but you already have Ember Drain 1, so maybe not. Maybe the Void Binding will not be played. The Forever Consumed currently deals 210. Let's make that bigger with this. So 300. So now you're going to die. And then we can play another Perils of Production and play Awoken Rail Spike to draw six cards. Make them all cheaper. All right, that seems ridiculous. Clink down here can possibly kill some. It did, so we got a Magma Morsel. Let's play that in the center. Spikes. Where do we want the spikes? I guess we always want spikes here. Root seeds we want... Ooh, actually... You've got... You've got a good amount. Let's give some root seeds to you. Razor Sharp Edge we're going to put on you too. And another Razor Sharp Edge. So now you're dealing tons of damage. I like that. I think I'm going to put the regen on you, though. Alright. 
fairly good turn. We at least took care of the top two floors, and we set up a lot of damage on the last divinity. Next turn, the middle floor is no problem. The bottom floor could be a problem. It could always be a problem. We do have Forever Consumed. But honestly, honestly, I don't think we play anything at the bottom. So what do we do? I guess what we do is we do a whole bunch of spells at the top. Sting, sting, sting. Don't really want Perils of Production. Sharpen. Sharpen could go on you. And Razor Sharp Edge could go on you. And then Forever Consumed will play at the top and just deal 200 damage damage. Alright. Fairly good turn. We'll have a lot of Ember for next turn. And then the one that made it up the floor at the bottom is no problem. He will die next turn, no problem. Our champion actually has a fair amount of damage on him, which means I might play old magic on him. You, you are a problem. Let's play root seeds here. And let's, we don't want to play any, anything on this floor because of the encant. So let's focus on the bottom floor. And I guess we just deal as much damage as we can to this unit. Which isn't isn't an amazing amount. Do we want to play Ember Drain on one of our units so that we can deal more damage? I don't think so. Let's just do Forever Consumed right as it is. So you don't die this turn, but you're actually going to die. Oh, our Morsel Maker died. That's not good. The Morsel Maker dying does kind of slow us down a fair amount. Because we don't get a guaranteed We don't get a guaranteed three ember every turn. We still do many turns though. Gem trove at the bottom. That gives us some morsels. You are dying. You are not dying, but the rest of them are, so the bottom is kind of fine. So let's do stings up here. Let's do magma morsels up here. We got a plink. Hmm. Let's play the plink at the bottom. And we got more morsels. All right. Let's play a Rebel Morsel at the top. That makes the Forever Consume do more. Let's do that. 300 damage. And then... Razor Sharp Edge on you would be terrible. You would die. So we won't do that. We'll do it here. Yeah, let's do it here. And we're, we're still doing just fine. We're almost at the Relentless phase, and we've done probably two-thirds of the health of the boss. We've only lost one of our units. And what do we care about this time? Not a whole lot. You're dying, you're taking damage, so let's just do damage at the top. Sting, sting. We could do the Perils of Production, like always. Don't think I want to. Don't really care about the Void Binding this turn. Razor Sharp Edge is always fine, right there. And then Forever Consumed at the top, 240 more damage. And next turn we should win. Pretty smooth battle overall, aside from the Mor Morsel Maker dying. That was the only downside, but... We are crushing it here. In fact, we can 
Let's Perils of Production on our champion. And Sting. And Forever Consumed the boss. Wait a minute. Only 330. Let's put the boss at one health. There we go. And then I won't even sting him. I'll give the kill to Morsel Maid. Oh, actually, it killed itself because of the Morsel Maid head spikes. All right. We win. And that's my first win with the Wildington, with the exiled champion of the Awoken clan. And of course, my first win on Covenant rank 11. We're still climbing those Covenant ranks. Pretty high score too, one of my highest. Covenant rank 12 major bosses have increased health. That I think is appropriate for how well we did that time. And of course we divinity mastered 13 more cards. Excellent. Including Wildenton. Awoken leveled up to level 9. The Edge Prior. Healing spells cost minus 1 Ember on this floor. That's fine. I don't use healing spells that much. The Shadow Eater. Gourds restore 10 health, deal 10 damage to enemy units. We saw this unit in the daily challenge. So I have seen this one before, but I did not have it unlocked yet. And then Prism Retrieval. Draw a unit, apply plus 5x attack and minus x ember. That's, that's nice. I think we saw this one too in the, in the daily challenge. Here are all of the new masteries. All right. We got our win streak up to number two. That makes sense. We've won on on 10 and 11. So hopefully we can continue to increase that win streak as we go up. And then regen applied 56. I'm actually very surprised that this is the highest we've gotten regen because the non-exiled champion really focuses on regen as its starting cards. So I'm kind of surprised that that's a new personal record, but there it is. All right, next time we will go up to, to Covenant rank 12 and try to master another of the champions. In this run, the Awoken become the first clan to progress to level nine and the Umbra make it to level seven. Now that I am back to standard runs, I get to master cards again. I have Divinity mastered 13 new cards, all of which were mastered for the first time. Looking at enemies on the right, Neffel the Wingless General is the next boss to make it to the 10 kill threshold. There are several more bosses to go here, but they are trickling in. Wilt Wings becomes my ninth completed enemy with more than 100 kills. Goodbye Wilt Wings, you have been checked off my list. On the left, I am featuring Wildenton, the exiled champion of the Awoken. My goal for this episode was to Divinity Master Wildenton, which I did. It also makes it past the 10 battle threshold. Deadweight becomes the first card that I have completed. I have brought Deadweight into more than 100 battles, and I have never used it for anything. I have been wondering whether Deadweight or Train Steward would be the first completed card, even though 7 of my 20 runs have been lower than Covenant Rank 2, where you always start with Deadweight, Deadweight still gets here first, due to my vigilance with removing Train Stewards. Finally, Artifacts. Hell's Banners was incredible this run, essentially giving me 3 extra Ember every turn. It worked very well with my various cards and artifacts that provided morsels to play. The first Hell Pact was also excellent, providing a plus 3 to each of my X cost cards, I had three of those, and at the end, one of them had holdover, so I played it every turn. I have even more detail in my tracking sheet, link in the video description, new episodes every Saturday, and thanks for watching.